Sometimes when you are using blended learning or personalized learning in your classroom, one of the big headaches can be having students kind of track their success. And so right here, you might have your own individual tracker for every single student. Also in column A and B, you might have your first and last name for each of your different students. And as they do these different things, you might just check them off the list or as they check in with you, uh, depending on the activity. Also, you don't want to maybe share this spreadsheet because it might have some confidential information like these points over here um, or these points here or here. But you do want your students to have some accountability with what they have been doing in the classroom. So what we're going to do is we are going to use this spreadsheet for the teacher's end. And then we're going to create this Google slide so that students have access to see how they individually did to different assignments. So with that, we're going to go into extensions, Autocrat, and we're going to click open. If you don't have Autocrat, you're going to need to get it from the Chrome Web Store. Once Autocrat loads, you are going to fill this out. Um, you might have something that says check in. Um, this one I'm going to go ahead and delete because there are errors, but you can just use what I have and then customize it for your own needs when I get this all set up. So again, once we're here, we're going to click new job and I'm just going to write check in for this um, job name. And then you're going to hit the next button right here. I'm going to click from my drive because I want to grab this template where it says public check ins. And you get you could attach your own little template that you want. You can also come in into my template, make a copy of it and change it to your own assignments um, as you might see fit. So as we're waiting for my drive to populate, think about all of that you want to do. And if you do change this, because you probably will, um, you'll just need to go in and add that new template where I am adding mine right now. And then I'm just searching for my check-in. Here is the one that I want to use. And then I hit select. Then I just wait for it to add to the template. So again, you're going to click from drive. You're going to find the one that you want to use, and then you're going to add it. Sometimes it's right down here. However, mine was not in this spot. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Now, right here, if you have multiple tabs, you want to make sure you're pulling the correct tab that you need. So I want this 822 to 830 tab. Again, if you have more, I just have one. Um, but this is where you'll click if you want to keep them all in one Google Sheet. So I'm going to do first name, and then I'm going to pull the last name. After that, I'm going to do one and all the way down. Now, I kind of did just one, two, three, four, because I was just being lazy. And then that way on my um, Google Sheet, I would just add the different activities to it. This doesn't really matter. Again, it was just me kind of saving some time and being a little bit lazy with it. So again, I'm just matching the numbers with the numbers, and I'm going to show you what that means in a second after I match all of these different numbers together. All right, so one more. So what that is saying is on here, you'll see that each of these assignments are listed as one, two, three, four. They all go along with the name for the assignment. And I just added the number up top. And so if you have another assignment, just add 14. Or if you want to take some away, you will just delete them from your template. What is in these carrots, so these two little carrots right here, is it's pulling that information from the spreadsheet from number one. Okay, so right here we can see number one. It's going to say false. It does not do like a checkbox, and I'm going to show you how we can clean that up though. So again, we're I just number them so I could be lazy because I didn't want to have to retype all of these. Autocrat is sometimes funny when you copy and paste. So sometimes if I would type this and copy and paste it, it doesn't always work. So I just thought, okay, I'm just going to be creative and do numbers. And then it's going to pull from up here, these numbers above the assignment. And sometimes also when you give students numbers on their assignments, it can just kind of help them quickly refer back to different assignments. If I'm like, okay, assignment number one, assignment number two, you miss it's in Google Classroom and they're labeled the exact same way in Google Classroom that can also kind of help too. Um, but really this is just for my own reference. Okay. And so again, what I'm saying is whatever is in row one, so right here, it's going to pull that information onto that Google slide. My file name, um, there's two different ways you can do this. 
One way is you could send an email to each of your students if I had a column that said email. I do not, and I just want to print these out because I think once my students have a paper copy, they can then bring that copy to me and we can check off, and I'm also able to write notes and action items in this space as I need to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say check in, and then I'm just going to put my name and maybe the date. That way I know that this is that check-in. Okay, instead of multiple inputs, I'm gonna do a single input. So again, if I wanted my students to receive an email, instead of a printed copy, I could do that. And I would do this multiple. If I just wanna print them, you're gonna do single. So again, if I wanted uh, the first one multiple, just make a column for email addresses and add those in. Or you can just print them off and just do a single um, print with that. So then we're ready for the next one. And I want it to go into this folder. Um, however, if you want it to go to a different folder, you'll just hit choose folder and you'll pick which folder in your Google Drive you want it to go to. And so again, you'll just kind of pick one. I would create a check-ins folder and then you'll delete the one that I have. Then you'll go and skip six. You're gonna skip seven. Um, eight is if you clicked um, back on step number four, multiple output modes, then you have to fill out slide number eight. Um, however, if you did not, you're gonna just leave it no. This is where you would add the tag and you would type in the email address. Uh, again, I do not have it on this sheet, but if you wanted to send an email to those students, you most certainly could. So I'm gonna click no because I do not have that. On here, um, we're just going to leave it as no because I want to run my own trigger. I want to run it um, maybe every Friday or something like that. So I'm just going to click plot the play button when I'm ready. Once you're all set, you're going to hit save. And now that we're waiting for it to load, the last step is again, I'm going to delete this one. And now I am going to hit that play button. And right here's that play button. I'm gonna wait just a few seconds. And we're gonna to start to see all of these run in just one second. So again, we can see it's starting right here. This was the one that I deleted so I can get rid of that. I'm just gonna hide it though for now. Okay, and we can see that it's doing its magic. All right, so it's all finished um, with everything that it done. So if I wanted to rerun this after I added some more information, I would just go in, delete these rows and hit the play button again. Um, so if I added some more information, that's what you would do. If not, you'll just reset it up on the next tab for the next week. Okay, so right here, as I can see, I can click right here to access that or I can go into my Google Drive and that folder is now going to have my new check-ins. So now if I go right here, you can see my check-in says how. This first slide we're just going to delete. It's just pulling the information um, because we had to add that row above there with the numbers. It's just kind of re-pulling that information. So you'll just delete slide number one. Slide number two starts with your student one, and I can see right here all of their information. Okay. There, it's all the way up to all of my different students. Now let's just kind of clean this up real quick because like where it says false, I just want it to be blank. So I'm gonna do Command F and I'm gonna do false and it's all capitalized. I can see that false is in this document 175 times, three dots, and I can go in here and I can replace it with just a blank. And I'm gonna hit replace all. All my falses are gone and it just looks really clean. Now I'm gonna do true, okay, again, capital, and then I just want an X for true. So anytime it sees true, it's gonna see it 284 times. I want it to be an X, and then I'm gonna hit replace all. All my trues are now an X. It just makes it cleaner when I am having those conversations with my students, and that should be all you have to do with find and replace, but that tool can be really helpful when you're using it with students. And so now this document, you can see there's no trues, it's uh, changed with an X. I'm able to print this and have those conversations with my students. Um, and I can kind of add any action items, like I might circle something and put an arrow and in this box, write the due date. 
or I might help my students list out like the priority of things they need to get done. I could also write a great note, like some of these students have rocked it out this week. And so I can say, great work. Here's an extension that I might want you to think about or help me with um, and have that conversation with those different students. So what a great way to check in with your students um, where you're able to track on your end, but then have a conversation with them in a Google slide, and then you can print this out. Again, if we pick that multiple um, email mode, we could send this individually to each student via email. But again, sometimes having paper check-ins just like this can be really helpful um, for students that might need it.